Super Sentai, the 45 plus year old Japanese tokusatsu franchise featuring teams of transforming, color coordinated heroes that most of the world knows in its American adapted form, Power Rangers. The cultural impact of the series is massive, and the number of works that reference, directly parody, and were inspired by it are countless. But among the sea of unofficial parodies, there's only one official, unofficial Sentai. Well, not counting this one that came out in 2021, or this other one that also came out in 2021. What the fuck? Anyway, in April of 2012, riding off the coattails of the 35th anniversary of the Super Sentai series as a whole, we were graced by the airing of Hikonin Sentai Akiba Ranger. Hikonin means, of course, unofficial. The name Akiba Ranger comes from the otaku haven city Akihabara, which is often shortened to just Akiba, and the show follows through with that theming, diving headfirst into all forms of otaku culture, from anime and manga to cosplay and dojinshi. All of the characters are into some section of otaku culture. Akiba Red is a Kagi Nobuo, a sentai otaku with an encyclopedic, almost obsessive knowledge of sentai. Wow, he's just like me. <laughs> he and the other Akiba Rangers are recruited by the famous seiyu, Maya Uchida. I mean, Hakase Hiroyo. Akiba Yellow is Yumeria Moegi, a cosplayer and doujin artist who jumps between different personalities depending on what cosplay she's wearing. Yumeria is a cosplay alias, by the way. Her real name is Yuko Yamada. Finally, Akiba Blue is Aoyagi Mitsuki, who is actually a mostly normal high school student. She practices karate, which is her reason for joining the team in the first place. But she's also a closet fan of Akiba Ranger's in universe anime, Zukun Aoi. The Akiba Ranger's main ride and transforming robot is an Itasha called the Machine Itasha. The transformation device, the Moe Moe Zikin, is also Aoi themed. You can own one yourself for the low, low price of. Oh my god. Using the Moe Moe Zikins, the Akiba Rangers transform. transport themselves into the world of their own delusions. The Akiba Rangers battle the evil marketing firm Stemma Otsu. If they do well enough, who knows? Maybe one day they will become an official sentai. Stemma Otsu is led by Malshina, played by former AV actress Honaka. Stemma Otsu is attempting to take over Akihabara by using their Tokyo District themed Monsters of the Week, Kakaricho or Chief Clerks to replace Akihabara's beloved otaku culture. Each monster is bested by our heroes, using their knowledge of sentai tropes to set up defeat flags which allowed them to win with ease. This formula is a lot of fun, and it leads to some great comedic bits and clever scenarios, like a battle between theater performance and TV tokusatsu filming. As a parody show, the action is often purposefully silly and saves on effects budget. I think this approach works greatly in the show's favor, as most of the effects are done practically and haven't aged poorly, like the CG elements. Which, while I can't say look great, like most Toki CGI, uh, they still feel like they fit into the comedic vibe of the show. Akiba Ranger's opening, just like the show, is very unique and fun, and a great representation of the show as a whole, with its pre-show narration from Maya Uchida that changes several times to reflect what's been happening in the show. And it's Moe Melody, performed by Haruko Momoi, which stands in stark contrast with Yukio Yamagata's gruffer harmony, which is much more in line with the typical Sentai opening, as Yamagata is a regular vocalist for Sentai inserts and openings. Quick side note on the music, Vocaloid Hatsune Miku is used for the mid-episode eye catch, as well as in some of the soundtrack. Akagi's and the show's catchphrase is Itasa wa tsuyosa, which means pain is power. Uh, itasa is being used here as slang, uh, in a similar way to how cringe has been used more recently. I think this catchphrase perfectly sums up what the show stands for, but I'll come back to that. 
Because Akiba Ranger is a Sentai parody series produced by the studio behind the original, Toei, they don't feature parody of Sentai, but rather the real Sentai characters in all of their official glory. The secret base, a Sentai-themed cafe owned by Hakase, serves as the Akiba Ranger's main base, and it is filled to the brim with Sentai toys and memorabilia. In the very first episode, Akagi imagines himself as Decker Red, but in the very next episode, Decker Red himself, Akaza Banban, appears. Although it's actually the actor who plays him, Ryuji Saine, in costume for a Power Rangers event. Speaking of, did you know that there's a Japanese dub of Power Rangers SPD where the SPD versions of the team are voiced by their original Decker Ranger counterparts? Weird, right? We get more appearances like this for Decker Red, Boken Red, Red Hawk, and the suit actor, Nibori Kazuo. The voices behind the chief clerks are also Sentai veterans, such as Tomo Kazuseki and Hikaru Midorikawa. Before I continue, a quick spoiler warning. I don't necessarily think I need to do this for a 10 year retrospective video, but just in case, if you're this far in and haven't seen the show and don't want any spoilers, this is the time to skip to. Spoiler warning over. After seven episodes of keeping to the formula of chief clerk battles and team development, much like a Sentai series proper, things start to change. The battles begin to leak into the real world. New villains are introduced. Dr. Zet, played by Kazuki Yao, and Delu Knight, voiced by Hiroaki Hirata. Revelations are made about Hiroyo, who turns out to be Dr. Zet's daughter and also the voice of Aoi. The fourth wall breaks, and the battle shifts entirely into the real world, where the Akiba Rangers can't transform and are helpless against the chief clerks. Until Akagi, in desperation, does this. This right here is awesome. <laughs> it demonstrates a great understanding of what makes the best sentai and best tokusatsu scenes period so exciting to watch. The build up leading to the triumph is spot on and would fit right into any official sentai. This scene also marks a major turning point for the series, where the story moves from a silly parody to a more balanced mix of drama and comedy. The status quo isn't safe yet though, and the Pentagon tries to recruit Akagi, who is replaced by a new Red, played by twin brother of Geki Blue, Shinfei Takagi, who did also appear in Geki Ranger as an evil clone. The new team transforms in a much more official style. <laughs> Meanwhile, Akagi meets up with Mashina and realizes that things aren't quite adding up. What they thought was the real world isn't actually real at all, but the television program Hikonin Sentai Akiba Ranger. Similarly to past Sentai members, Akaki is being replaced in an effort to shake up the show. With the help of Malshina, he escapes from the Pentagon agents and reveals the truth to the rest of the team by doing this. No, no. <laughs> Which, by the way, is one of my favorite instances of fourth wall breaking of all time. It turns out the man behind the shakeup is none other than the man credited at the beginning of every episode of not just Akiba Ranger, but every official Sentai. Hate Saburo. Holy fucking shit, this show is genius. Hate Saburo isn't a real person, by the way, he's the collective pen name for many people who have worked on Sentai over the years. Regardless, this twist is perfection. Hidden in plain sight, you sly dog. 
The Akiba Rangers realize that Hate Saburo is trying to end their show, so they try various methods to prevent the show from ending. But the Lu Knight takes Akagi's love interest Sayaka hostage. Unable to abandon her, the Akiba Rangers go to battle Delu Knight, knowing that if they defeat him, the show will end. Delu Knight attempts to get the Akiba Rangers to battle him to the death, but Dr. Zet and Machina return, declaring that their battles will continue for a long time. However, Dr. Zet is taken over again by Hate's shakeup, and summons a giant CG robot, Boomerang Titan. The Akiba Rangers are forced into battle, and despite all their efforts to throw the fight, Boomerang Titan keeps taking damage and is ultimately destroyed. However, Malshina returns once again, declaring that their battles will continue, at least for another 6 months. They're interrupted by the words, THE END, which they destroy, but Hate Saburo grabs the camera, ending the episode. The following and final episode is the Akiba Rangers receiving a clip show and a note from Hate Saburo to consider their mistakes. The Akiba Rangers appear in suit, asking the audience to help them get a season 2. What a finale. Absolutely perfect for a show like Akiba Ranger. And luckily for our heroes, they did get a season 2. I won't discuss it too much in this video, maybe some other time. Next year, maybe? <laughs> what I will say is that despite Blue being replaced and the plot elements from the second half of the season not carrying over immediately due to some plot relevant retcons, it has more of the fun fan service and meta humor that made season 1 great, and I'd still recommend it to those that enjoyed the first season. Before I conclude the video, I do have a few fun facts that I wanted to include. As mentioned earlier, Akiba Ranger aired very soon after the end of the 35th anniversary series, Kaizok Sentai Go Kaijer. Uh, that's a personal favorite of mine, by the way. It was initially planned to be a direct parody of Go Kaijer, being the pirated version of Go Kaijer. Go Kaijer's collectible toys were ranger shaped keys, which allowed the Go Kaijers to transform into other Sentai Rangers. And the Akiba Rangers actually did have keys released. They just don't fit into the actual transformation device because they're unofficial. Don't fret though, because the recently announced 10th anniversary versions will. The Akiba Rangers also have an appearance in the most recent Kamen Rider and Super Sentai crossover movie, Superhero Senki. So proud of them. There was also a web radio show hosted by Masatawada who played Akagi where he and the other cast members discussed how they were doing after and during the making of the show. But unfortunately I have only been able to find the first two episodes preserved anywhere online. Akiba Ranger is first and foremost a fun parody show filled with fan service for fans of the original Super Sentai series. But it also has legs to stand on emotionally and its use of the fourth wall in its narrative is a daring and cool direction to take what could have easily been a pure comedy show. This balance is the core of Akiba Ranger, and its message of embracing what you love no matter how nerdy, cringe, or painful it is, and expressing it in whatever way feels right, is genuinely beautiful. So never forget... Itazawa Tsuyosa! Welcome to the end card! Uh, this is the first time I've ever tried doing any review or video essay or <laughs> scripted content at all, so I have no idea what kind of recommendations you're gonna get from here. But this was me trying something out that's way different from everything else I've been doing, which is the <laughs> VTuber stuff uh, between streams and highlights that I've been posting here for the past year or so, uh, and on a very infrequent basis. I've got a bunch of ideas for other stuff I want to make videos about like this, including some more Super Sentai and Tokusatsu topics, as well as some anime stuff. So if you're still watching this, and I really hope you liked it, uh, I hope to see you in the next one.